What's good, YouTube? We back here today, and we here to talk about Laker fans. And sorry, my hair napping. I literally just didn't give a crap. I thought I woke up today. I thought I got to work, so I really didn't give a crap. But anyways, we here to talk about Russell Westbrook and what Laker fans and LeBron fans, what we've been dealing with. Now, there has been a lot of good, a lot, a lot of good from Russell Westbrook this season. But... As of lately, a lot of people have been starting to notice his um struggles. Well, not really struggles. His, let's see. I said, I tweeted the other day that Russell Westbrook is one of the funniest players to watch. And I literally mean funniest. Because he literally invents new ways to uh turn over the ball. Like, literally. Against the Rockets, he dribbled the ball off his foot. Um, Last night, we had a three-on-one fast break. And somehow, Russell Westbrook... Throws the ball into the stands into the third row. Like I don't, I just don't get it. But it's just something that I need to tell y'all, Lakers fans, LeBron fans. He ain't gonna change. He's gonna be Russell Westbrook. Yep, just get that in your head. He's gonna be Russell Westbrook. If we're stuck with him, you gotta deal with it. But I'm behind Russ no matter what. The bad, the good. But last night, I it literally I almost lost it. Like I literally been just trying to get through the Westbrook thing. Like I said. I love the good that Russell Westbrook brings to his team. His passing when he's on target, Russell Westbrook is one of the best passers in the league. It's just the crazy turnovers. He's one of the best finishers in the league. But sometimes this season, he just has random times where he's just missing layups because he's moving too fast. And that's who Russell Westbrook is. If he's not moving fast, going 100 miles an hour, getting offensive rebounds, he ain't Russell Westbrook. So, you're going to have to deal with the turnovers. But last night, I get... I can get you have seven turnovers for a game. I can get it. I can get it. But he had seven turnovers in the first half. Like seven turnovers in the first half alone. Like that's the most frustrating thing about Russell Westbrook. But you have to deal with it. Like there's no getting over the hump. That's how Russell Westbrook, Russell, Russell Westbrook plays. He's going 100 miles an hour. But the one thing about Russell, Russell Westbrook that uh, people are finally finally starting to notice it, it's not the turnovers. It ain't the offense. It ain't the missed layups. He doesn't play defense at all. I, I hope y'all just not really. He doesn't play defense at all. Maybe sometimes it'll be in the passing lane because he is on defense. He gambles a lot for passing lanes. I'm not mad at that. He can be a gambler, but he doesn't play defense at all. People are just not starting to notice that. I've noticed that for the last few seasons he doesn't play defense at all. I get it. He's later in his career, but he can, he can at least show some effort, especially when AD comes back. Because um, we're really going to need defense on the perimeter, especially if we don't uh, end up making a trade. Um, I honestly want the Lakers to trade for Harrison Barnes or uh, Jeremy Grant, but I honestly don't know how realistic it is right now, especially since some of our players' trade value have been going down. <clears throat> THG. But um, some of our players' trade value has been going down. We have yet to see Kendrick Nunn. I still, I don't want to trade Kendrick Nunn, even though I haven't seen him. I still think Kendrick Nunn can be a key, key part to this team, especially Malik Monk, who has been on fire. He's literally been everything that I thought he would be for this team and more. Him and LeBron's chemistry is odd as well. And LeBron took over last night on defense in the fourth quarter, on defense. It wasn't even off. He didn't even have to score a lot. He took over on the defensive end and then, Melo did his thing. Melo's been unbelievable, especially at home. Malik Monk doing what he does. Now, the one thing that frustrates me is when Frank Vogel is locked on the lineup, like he stuck with it. Like when he ran two bigs, he was stuck running two bigs the whole game. And last night, Nazri was killing the Lakers on the offensive glass. Vanderbilt was killing the Lakers on the offensive glass. You would think he'll eventually throw out Dwight Howard for a few minutes. At least he can give us some energy. Like, I'll, if you're going to stick to the small ball lineup, you can still sell them in for a few minutes if you see if they have a big on the court that's dominating a little bit. But fourth quarter, LeBron switched on the Naz Reed, stopped that. Uh, they switched Stanley Johnson to Vanderbilt. Now, I can't be mad at Stanley Johnson for uh, letting Naz Reed uh, score on him. Stanley Johnson was holding his ground, but Naz Reed just has a seven inch height advantage. Like, wh what do you want him to do? Well, not, it wasn't seven inch, but probably like four or five inches on. Uh, on Stanley Johnson, like, what do you want him to do? Like, you could have put in Dwight Howard just for a few seconds, just a few minutes, just to show that he can, uh, he, like, Dwight, they, I like Dwight Howard some type of scrub, like DeAndre Jordan, who's on, who's still on my team. 
hopefully DeAndre Jordan is gone on my team uh, in the next few weeks. But um, they're still trying to make a move with Stanley Johnson. Um, they're trying to sign him for the rest of the season, but I think they'll sign him to another 10-day on Wednesday uh, when the actual roster spot, I think, will be open. He can sign his 10-day because as of right now, he didn't practice with the Lakers yesterday. Darren Collison didn't practice with the Lakers yesterday. But um, Avery Bradley, apparently I, I read a tweet today of one of the Lakers reporter that said Avery Bradley and Stanley Johnson, they'll determine if they're going to be on a team. Uh, the front office will determine if they'll be on the team this week. So we'll get to find that out. Hopefully, well, it better be, both of them better be on this team because as much as people have been ashamed of Avery Bradley, Avery Bradley not only on defensive end, but the corner threes and three-pointer in general, he has been a sniper, especially over the last month. He's been, I think he's, I don't think he's 40%. I think he's been shooting close to 50% from three, which is ridiculous. Him and Malik Monk in our backcourt has been ridiculous. But Lakers get whole. I still think we can win with Westbrook, but I still feel like there's only a ceiling because sometimes with Russell Westbrook, like sometimes just if he just out of control, sometimes you just gotta pull him out of the game. Like I don't know what you can do. Like Russell Westbrook is good, don't get me wrong, but when he's playing bad, it's very very bad. And you have to pull him out of the game and. Then sometimes, some games he might become useless, which I don't want to say that about Russell Westbrook, but sometimes that could happen. I don't know if you still stick with that because I still think with them three all together and they trade for another uh, big wing like a Jeremy Grant or Harrison Barnes or maybe like a small, uh, some smaller deals like trading for a stretch big like Muscala and getting uh, Williams from the Thunder or go out there and get Justin Holiday and maybe try to attempt get... Uh, Miles Turner, which I don't think is realistic. Well, it, it actually might be realistic because I honestly I don't think Miles Turner's trade value is as high as people think. It's high and even as high as I think. So maybe you never know. Um, but I just don't. I I don't know. I just feel like there's a certain ceiling that you can do uh, with LeBron, AD, and Russ. Well, I, let me get this right. I know what LeBron and AD is going to do in the playoffs, and I've seen what Russell Westbrook can do in the playoffs. But maybe they can get through it if LeBron's the main handler in the playoffs. The game will slow down, which kind of scares me because I don't know how Russell Westbrook will play in the playoffs when the game slow down. So, But I still trust Russell Westbrook, but I just feel like there's a certain ceiling. It's, it, okay, if the Lakers improve their roster by with still keeping Russell Westbrook, Maybe I'll change my mind in the next month or so. But as of right now, I just feel like there's a certain ceiling that the Lakers can only get with this big three. But maybe maybe they'll change. But I've seen a lot of good from Russ Westbrook. But the uh, the bad has just been out there lately. If if you know what I mean. Like the last since Christmas, the bad has been out there. But he did have a uh, few good games, like the Rockets game. Uh, the Grizzlies game, he actually played well until the fourth quarter. I don't know what happened in the fourth quarter. He just, well, honestly, I, I can't even blame him. The whole team just looked gassed because they was on a back-to-back. But, honestly, Russell Westbrook, I still believe in you, but I just feel like there's a ceiling. The free throw shoot is not good, um, but we I expected that because it hadn't been good the last three seasons. But his playmaking has been very, very, very good. Russell Westbrook is on, locked in. He's not turned the ball over. His playmaking has been very, very good. His offensive rebound has been very, very good. But I don't know, bro. It, it, the thing is, if you would trade Russell Westbrook, I don't know if there's a good trade out there that will help. Like I don't know if the Pacers will sit there and say, oh, I want to trade Miles Turner or somebody like this. Oh, Malcolm Brogdon, which I don't think is ridiculous. I don't see why they would do that, but I'm just throwing out names. Um... Ben Simmons, I know that won't happen because the Sixers refuse to give up. Well, no, the Sixers refuse to take Russell Westbrook unless somehow they find like a three-team trade that can trade Russell Westbrook. But honestly, right now, I don't care about trading Russell Westbrook because in, I'm pretty sure probably in the next two weeks, you're going to get a little sample size. Of probably three to four weeks before the trade deadline, the Lakers might be healthy. You might have Kendrick Nunn back. You might have Anthony Davis back in the, probably the next Two to three weeks. You're going to have a little small window. Probably about 
three weeks of games to tell if the Lakers, if this team can show a little bit of sign before the trade deadline because you really only have three weeks to tell if the Lakers are going to be, if this team can stick together and, uh, without trading anybody. And we haven't seen the Lakers hold at all this year, literally at all. Because uh, when they were at least somewhat healthy, you didn't have a reason. You didn't have um, Kendra Nunn. So we're going to have three weeks to figure it out. Um, probably late January to mid-February after the All-Star break. <sighs> that ain't enough time, but if Rob Polinka can figure it out, I hope he can. But I'm kind of nervous with this team. But trust me, going to the playoffs, I'll never be nervous. You got LeBron and Anthony Davis. And you got Malik Monk, who I think will be big for us. So, I'm not worried. But, I just think this team just need to be improved. I think Russell Westbrook just needs to slow the game down a little bit. But, this is what? Year 14 to 15 for Russell Westbrook. He ain't going to change. So, you just got to deal with it. If they don't tell you with it, you just got to deal with it. Laker fans, you just think about it. You just got to deal with it. It's Russell Westbrook. He ain't going to change. They showed the interview last night. I don't like the question that they asked. But, Russell Westbrook was like, I'm going to turn the ball over. I'm going to continue to miss shots. That's just part of the game or something like that. <laughs> the, the dude ain't going to change. That's his mentality. I'm I'm not mad at it, but it's frustrating. But you just got to deal with it. Russell Westbrook, we still behind you. But if the Lakers somehow can improve this roster before the trade deadline, if it means moving Russell Westbrook, I'm sorry, but I don't know. But Lakers fans, how do y'all feel about Russell Westbrook? Uh... Drop down in the comment section. People, but uh, before I say that, it's been like Russell Westbrook fans versus people that hate Russell Westbrook has been funny on Twitter. Um, like they don't point out like the um people that's against Russell Westbrook. They don't see like they're literally blind to the uh good of Russell Westbrook. Like literally blind to the good of Russell Westbrook. Like they literally don't um. Like, they don't tweet out when Russell Westbrook was playing good. Like, I noticed, like, people like Shannon Sharp. Like, he responded to one of my tweets the other day. I was talking about Russell Westbrook. Um, I think he let John. Oh, it was against the Grizzlies. He let John Morant, like, um, shoot a three right before half. Like, they didn't notice anything, like, through three quarters where Russell Westbrook did. But they noticed him giving up that three right at the end of the quarter, uh, st- uh, starting the fourth quarter to John Morant. Which ended up being big because John Morant went off that fourth quarter. But. It's like people don't notice the good that Russell Westbrook like the okay the haters don't notice the good that Russell Westbrook does but the uh, people that's pro Russell Westbrook it's like they don't see the uh, bad that Russell Westbrook plays like it's only like a few and I mean a few that's in between that notice the good and bad like it's so toxic but you got Laker fans Russ fans LeBron fans all in one fan base it, it's kind of frustrating it makes my head hurt but well, we just deal with it but it's funny. But it's not fun at the same time because I don't like the Lakers lose. But some way it got figured out. But I'm going to let y'all get out of here, man. I've been talking too long. But no, let me know how y'all feel about Russ Westbrook. Should they trade him? Do y'all think he will still be Russ? Do y'all, think it's, do y'all still see a vision with this team staying together? The big three keeping role players. But moving on from people like Baysmore, DeAndre Jordan, um, possibly THG to get some better wings like or stretch big like Muscala, uh, Kenrick, Kenrick Williams, however you say that for the Thunder. I think he'll be a, maybe a nice piece. Uh, Justin Holiday, um, maybe a Thaddeus Young for the Lakers. Um, who else? I'm trying to think of somebody else. Um, I'm trying to throw out a name for. I'm, give me wrong. Look in the camera. Give me wrong. It, this will never happen, but. I'm not saying Marcus Smart, but a Marcus Smart type player. Do y'all think that would be good for the Lakers? Because I know the Lakers and the Celtics most likely want to do a trade. I, I I think in my lifetime, I've only seen the Lakers and Celtics make two trades. But well, just drop some names down in the comment section who y'all think the Lakers could possibly target not only big names, but some key role players. That's that's why I want key role players because I don't, honestly don't think the Lakers can land a big name unless they somehow have a trade package where somebody accepts. Russell Westbrook and THC, which I don't think is possible. But just drop down in the comment section. I hope y'all have a blessed day. I hope y'all stand masked up. 
Because this COVID stuff is ridiculous. But it's been your brother Tim and I'm out. Peace.